Welcome to the Digital Amateur Television Experimenters Night. This is VK7 OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania. Amateur radio is a worldwide hobby that has many different aspects. Digital television is just one of the many modes and areas that are covered. Maybe you're interested in becoming involved in the DATV Experimenters Nights. Do you realise that you do not have to be a radio amateur or need any ATV equipment to participate anywhere in the world? Also participate in the night by coming up to the Queen's Domain Club Rooms. Yes, right on top of the Queen's Domain in the Heritage Listed Coast Wireless Station. You never know, we might get you in front of the camera or behind doing one of the many roles during the night. We get underway with our program on a Wednesday night from 7.30pm local time. We'll see you soon. This is VK7 OTC. Okay, this is VK7 OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania with our DATV Experimenters Night. And it's Justin, VK7 Tango Whiskey at the mic uh, this evening. And uh, just to an acknowledgement of country, in uh, recognition of the deep history and culture of this island, we would like to acknowledge and pay our respects to all Tasmanian Aboriginal people, the traditional owners of the land upon which we present tonight. And we've got a uh, huge program tonight, something a little bit different uh, and a few things that are a bit left field, but uh, they, they, do have, uh, they do have some uh, linkages back into electronics and a few other things. And of course, a uh, big promotion of uh, the, uh, the Tasmanian Ham Radio Conference and Expo, which is in two weekends time so you hear lots of promotion on the WIA broadcast on the weekend and a few other uh, areas uh, about that particular conference now first uh, ICOM during the week uh, announced that uh, they had upgraded uh, first of all the programming software for the IC705 that's the CZ sorry, CS, CS, uh, 705 programming software. They have gone to version 1.2. Uh, that is because um, it, they needed it to be compatible with the uh, firmware version 1.30, uh, which they also released at the same time. Um, and it also adds a receiving root history to the receive history for that particular software. Now the other release, which is only a couple of days ago, is version 1.31 of the firmware for the IC705. Um, now the notes, the release notes say improvement the, to the RX pop-up in the DV mode, so this is the D-Star mode, uh, does not automatically disappear when you open or close the multi-function menu, and that's been resolved in version 1.31. Available for download, very easy to update. Uh, you just need to put it onto a, um, uh, a, a SIM card, um, a SIM card, <laughs> an SD card. <laughs> you can try putting a SIM card in there, but I don't think it'll work. Um, and uh, oh, hello to Lionel KJ7OFH. Uh, good, uh, good evening. Good morning. Um, thanks for uh, for letting us know where you're coming in from. And please, if you're coming in, uh, chuck something in the chat uh, and let us know where you're from. Uh, and if you've got any questions along the way, please, please, please uh, uh, throw them in the uh, in the chat. 
Now, um, who remembers simple old uh, USB A and B? <laughs> now, USB A and B, it was just 5 volts, um, and uh, depending on what the adapter was... Uh, uh, the adapter was capable of it. It would give you probably five volts at maybe uh, two amps maximum or one amp maximum or or whatever. If you owned an iPhone, there was a five watt one and a twelve watt one and a etc etc. Now that's that was great. Um, very easy to understand. Uh, very easy to look at a USB the four pins of a USB connector and get a, a you know a ground and a, a five volts and it was always five volts. <laughs> And then you had a transmit and a receive pin, and uh, it only ever went in one way, and all sorts of stuff. Well, gone are those days. <laughs> I I have a um, uh, a variety of devices, uh, which are now starting to use USB C. Now USB C is a um, uh, let me go to um, yeah. Now, USB-C, uh, let me so zoom in here. USB-C is um, this connector here. So, there's my, <laughs> there's my fingernail. So, it's about the same size as USB-A. Um, however, there are 12. Um, there are actually 24 pins, 12 on each side of that, of that connector. And you'll notice that there is no keying on it. it can, it's a reversible connector, so it can go in in either way. So, what I also noticed, and you'll notice on this particular adapter, it's got the input voltage, which is a, a large range, you know, for, to cover the 120 volts, the 110 volt, the 120 volt, and up to our 240 volts. And then the different uh, frequencies coming in for the US and... Uh, and uh, the UK and, and us. But the output voltage is a whole range of voltages and currents. And you'll notice the QC, which is the Qualcomm Connect, a quick charge connect, is 5 volts at 3 amps DC, 9 volts at 3 amps DC, or 12 volts at 2.5 amps DC. And then there's a PD, which is... Um, uh, the power um, uh, power delivery standard, <laughs> which is 5 volts at 3 amps, 9 volts at 3 amps, 12 volts at 2.5 amps, and 15 volts at 2 amps. And then there is the PPS, <laughs> which is uh, the, um, the Qualcomm, uh, the Qualcomm uh, type standard. And that gives you anything from 3.3 volts to 11 volts up to 2.72 amps. Now, now, I looked at this and I went, okay, uh, how do I know that what I'm plugging in is actually going to get the right voltage and be able to draw that current? So, I looked into... <laughs> I looked into the USB standard and the USB-C standard specifically and there's a whole lot more complexity. <laughs> um, when we've gone to the USB-C standard, um, the, the key thing with USB-C was it's much, much faster data transfer rate. Now the reason that is, and it's quite simple, um, the reason that it is that it is, and let me just zoom out here a little bit so you've got a bit of a, an idea. Um, and if I focus it, ooh, let's go the other way. Okay, now this is what that uh, USB C connector looks like here, and you'll notice that it's it is symmetrical, which is what you'd expect because you can plug it in either way. There are grounds at either end. There is what they call V-bus or voltage bus here and here. There is a CC1 and a CC2 here that are symmetrically opposite. And there's an S-bus 2 and an S-bus 1 symmetrically opposite in the other positions. And then in all the other positions, there is a TX plus and minus, 
TX1 plus and minus, an RX1 plus and minus, there's an RX2 plus and minus, and there's a TX2 plus and minus. And then in the middle here, there's a D minus and a D plus, and then the opposite is a D plus and a D minus. Now, you, the normal USB A and B use actually these particular transmission uh, lines here. So these are, these are balanced lines. Um, uses the plus and the minus here, or this way, depending on which way it's, it's, it's um, plugged in. So this is the USB A standard, the, or the USB 2 and, two, uh, two and 1.1 use these connectors here. Um, and the C, CC1 and CC2 actually have a particular control protocol with them. So the piece of equipment, when you plug it in, realises that it's this particular USB standard and will use these pins to negotiate the voltage on these pins in relation to ground. And it can be anything up to 20 volts at 5 amps if the plug pack's able to actually deliver that. Now there are, there are particular standards of USB and as you go up these standards vary, surprise surprise. But the key thing with and what makes USB-C so much faster than USB uh, 2 or 1.1 is that it can actually use all of these transmission lines. So these transmission pins, it can use these and it can also use these and if necessary it can use these as well so you actually have three possible transmission uh, lines that can transmit data so there's two lane operation which is using these two pairs here can give up to giving 10 and 20 gigabits per second or 1.2 and 2.5 gigabits uh, gigabits per second or gigabytes per second, 1.2 to 2.5 gigabytes per second speeds because you actually have two transmission paths. Yeah, come in. Query from Ron. Are you putting out RF tonight? I think I am. He said he's not getting any. <laughs> oh, okay. Just uh, stand by. Just stand by and I'll double check. We may have an antenna that's full of water. We're certainly on air. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, we certainly are, but we may have an antenna that's suffered some damage. Um, so, um, we, are, we are certainly uh, putting out uh, RF uh, for those people who are trying to uh, receive RF. Uh, if you are receiving RF, um, call in on um, R2. Sorry, I'll just turn on R2. Um, so, so... That's what makes this so much quicker. The, the, it can use both pairs uh, to transmit data at a much, much greater rate. Um, the power negotiation um, between the source device and the sync device is up to 20 volts uh, coming through on these pins here uh, and up to 20 volts at 5 amps if the, if the plug pack's capable of actually doing that. Um, now... The different modes, um, USB 3 or um, USB-C, which is this one, uses dual lane. As I've said, both lanes are being used at the one time. Gets you uh, much, much fa faster. Um, there is a USB 2 and 1.1 mode, which uses these pins and these pins only. So it's, it's, it's much like your, your normal USB A or B. The power delivery is controlled by these. There's a power delivery mode. It goes through a negotiation when you plug it in. The USB 3 uses both lanes, so it's much quicker. There's an alternative mode, which is one of up to four high-speed channels. So it uses one, one, two, three, four, but it can also use SBU1 and SBU2 as a data channel as well, which it uses these pins to actually negotiate which of these pairs it actually uses. And it can be a, a much, much higher transfer rates. And then the interesting one, there is a debug accessory mode. 
So what it does is on CC1 and CC2, you can actually put a series of resistors in here, either pulling these pins up or down, and it puts the, uh, the particular accessory into, a, into a, a, a predetermined mode. So that's interesting. And the, the last mode with USB-C is an audio adapter accessory mode. Now what it does when it goes into this audio adapter accessory mode is all of the digital signals are switched off. And literally, uh, uh, the analog signals can then be fed via particular pins on here um, as analog signals without their being affected by uh, the noise from the digital signaling. So it actually puts the, uh, the adapter into an analog, an audio adapter accessory mode and you don't get all of the, um, uh, the issues with digital noise. Um, so USB-C, <coughs> oh pardon, you look at this little connector and there's an awful lot that can come out of it uh, as well as a whole lot of different power modes. Uh, it can also be put into an audio mode, it can be put into an audio, um, uh, an alternative data mode uh, and also a, a range of other things. So for, quick, for equipment to uh, that is compliant, it can request up to 2 amps at 5 volts um, and also it can re uh, at that 2 amps at 12 volts or up to 20 volts out of here. Um, I think this one's capable of 20 volts. Uh, it's certainly capable of up to 15 volts. That's, that's the maximum one in, the, in the, the power device mode that's written on here. Um, 15 volts at at 2 amps, which is 30 watts out of this. Um, so yeah, it, it's... And there's a, the CC pins, um, uh, controllers over the CC wire if one is present in, when you're in the device that you plug in. If there isn't a CC wire in the device, it can actually use a 24 meg BFSK, so... Um, uh, frequency shift key encoded transmission over the V bus lines to actually uh, tell the power adapter what it actually wants in the way of voltage or current and or current. So there, there's a whole lot of negotiation that goes on when you just when you normally plug this in. There's a whole lot of power negotiation goes on. There's there's a whole lot of accessory adapter negotiation goes on, and all sorts of things go on. Um, there is a whole lot of um, you'll notice some some adapters these days, and this is just a normal um, a USB one, a USB A um, type connector. This is a Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0. So what this is capable of giving you is. Um, a voltage of, of 3 volts, uh, 3.2, 3.6 volts, all the way up to 20 volts <laughs> at 0.2 volt increments and up to 2.6 or 4.6 amps. And all of that is negotiated uh, via um, the protocol, the actual power uh, PPS protocol uh, on this particular USB connector. Uh, so if you look on here, it actually says, it doesn't just say 5 volts, it says 5 volts at 3 amps, 9 volts at 2 amps, and 12 volts at 1.5 amps. Um, so, and that is via the PPS, um, uh, the PPS type, uh, or the, the Qual, Qualcomm Quick Charge 3 standard, and they are currently up to, I think, 6.0 standard, uh, which gives you a whole lot of other control as well. It gives you um, the ability to do constant, uh, constant voltage, constant current uh, for charging batteries. Um, so it can control, it basically becomes a, a constant current or a constant voltage or both battery charger uh, using these particular uh, protocols to uh, adjust what voltage comes out of these, uh, these plug packs. Uh, so when you just plug in your normal USB connector, and I plug it in, you know, with my phone <laughs> to charge the um, ch charge the uh, charge the phone, um, there's a whole lot of stuff going on in here um, that uh, we we're, we're well and truly not aware of. So uh, 
the QC, which is the Qualcomm Quick Charge, uh, the PD, which is the power uh, device, or the PPS, uh, which is uh, the extended power range stuff. Um, uh, and then there are a whole lot of Qualcomm uh, Quick Charge uh, standards as well. Uh, this just happens to be number three, and I think they're up to number six by now. So, uh, outrageous. It's just... <laughs> uh, oh, hello, uh, hello Murray, uh, VK7ZMS. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> Muzz, you're just um, you, you're just not plugging something into a USB connector anymore. You're plugging in, and it's doing a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of little protocol uh, requests and negotiations between the device and uh, the source now on your uh, on your plug packs. It's never uh, never any simple. It's not simple anymore. <laughs> and there are whole lots of um, chipsets that enable you to do this. Uh, that are all built. Uh, you'll find that there'll be one in here. Uh, there'll be a chipset that uh, uh, that um, handles the the QC, the PD, or the PPS, or all three um, protocols to uh, negotiate the voltage and the current that's coming out of here when you plug a uh, a device in. So uh, I just found that absolutely fascinating. Uh, just <laughs> there is uh, so much more to uh, to plug packs and USB. Uh, then, uh, then you can uh, you can imagine and poke a uh, poke a stick at. Now, um, for those who don't know, I used to be really into um, uh, black and white photography, and in fact, uh, where I used to live, we had a um, black and white darkroom set up, and I used to uh, do a whole lot of. Uh, um, oh, okay, Murray. Uh, this is why my phone charger is like nine minutes if I use. The factory charger, it's a huge improvement on the original USB charging, well and truly. Because basically, it's negotiating a higher current and higher voltage, potentially, uh, so that it can charge it quicker. Um, just uh, phenomenal. Um, uh, and it's the phone, uh, I know on the my iPhone, when I charge it, it comes up with a little pop-up that says... Um, we are optimizing your battery life, uh, and this will be this will be um, this will be charged by you know by four o'clock in the morning. Uh, do you you know if you want to change this, push the button and you can change the the charging profile, which is just off the show. Anyway, so um, now when I was doing um, uh, black and white photography, I was very much into. Um, Sound triggers. I, I, I experimented with sound triggers for a, uh, a very long time. And in fact, a story that I related to some people in the club rooms last week uh, reminded me that I, I needed to um, look up some, some photos that I'll show you in a minute of sound tri interesting sound triggers and um, uh, uh, talk about this because it was, um, it was good fun. It was fantastic fun. Now, this is a sound trigger design that I built from Practical Electronics. Now, Practical Electronics, uh, I, I'm not sure whether it even exists anymore, but Prac Electronics uh, was an English magazine, uh, came out of the UK uh, and had lots of do-it-yourself projects. Uh, this was a particular sound trigger project that they had. It uses uh, 555 timers. Uh, that enable you and a whole series of uh, timing uh, resistors which enable you to set um, um, 0 seconds, 0.5 seconds, uh, 1 second, 2.5 seconds, 5, 10, etc, etc. Um, I think that, yeah, I, th I think that's right. And then there was a little op-amp circuit that took the uh, the microphone and give, gave you some, uh, some gain control on the sensitivity and then you could go out to a, a flash a flash unit, uh, and you had a mute or a fire button um, that you could, so you could set everything up, be really, really quiet, put it on fire, and then uh, do the sound. And the flash, you'd you'd put your camera on bulb, so that would open the open the shutter. You'd be in the dark. Uh, the flash would be pointed at whatever you were you were doing, and um, uh, then the flash would go off when the sound uh, happened plus this delay and you get uh, all sorts of different uh, all sorts of interesting uh, photos <laughs> all sorts of interesting photos I'm just having my photo taken here <laughs> um, uh, so 
This was Prec, Prec Electronics. Now, this was good. This was really good. I, I took some photos like, um, uh, like, um, like this one. <laughs> this is me when I had a whole lot more hair. Um, I had a, a pressurized container and I was, I was, had a spoon and a, as the lid came off, it popped and um, it caused the flash to happen. Um, there were a whole lot of uh, different things like, uh, this is a balloon uh, with a dart um, and you can see uh, the, 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 um, the, the, in a sec, in a sec. <laughs> um, when you, um, uh, you increase the delay, of course the balloon would, the balloon, hang on, the balloon would go, this is, the dart has just touched the balloon and the balloon is collapsing. This is the balloons fully collapsed, but the dart is still in the air. <laughs> um, you've got, oh, and then even more. Um, this is the, the the dart still in the air, and the balloon has well and truly collapsed. Um, um, and ver various different um, uh, uh, bits and pieces of that. <laughs> um, this is a ceramic uh, plate. Uh, that I'm hitting with a hammer. You can see my hand here, um, and it's just breaking into pieces. Um, this is a falling cassette case, um, and all sorts of. Anyway, so this was great, and I was I was I was doing all these experiments, but I I needed a bit more control. So what I ended up doing, and this was when I I was starting to work. Um, and I, I was able to play with, um, I was able to play with, uh, why can we go any further? Yes, we can. So I was able to, um, and at the time I was playing with Intel 8748 microcontrollers. That's what we were using in our, um, in our, uh, in the company I was working with, um, and plug this in um, okay so um, the 8748 what I was able to do with the 8748 was um, actually put and there's the microphone crystal microphone uh, and then this goes off to a, uh, a flash connector uh, so that plugs into the flash unit so what I was able to do with the 8748 you can actually dial up, and this is this is right down to one microsecond, so one millionth of a second. And so I was able to code the 8748 so that it was a really, really tight uh, loop that it was going through, and it would read what was here, and you'd go input, and then you would arm the... Uh, now, mute it. You would arm the input arm you would arm the unit and then if you took it off mute when as soon as it heard here something here and you could set the there's a little op amp in here to set the sensitivity of the microphone it would go off in well in this particular case that is 0.1 of a second so if we go that's 0.9 of a second so nearly a second so if we go to And that's 0.9 of a second later, the flash goes off. So if we go to 0.1 of a second, it's 0.1, and we can go all the way down to one microsecond or one millionth of a second. <laughs> now, you, you saw that, didn't you? <laughs> that was one millionth of a second. So it gave me a lot more control on what I could actually do um, as a as a sound trigger, and you can see a JGC sound trigger two. So this is model two. Um, so this this gave me the ability to get a whole lot more granularity um, for the sound triggers, which I, I then started to do some um, do some experiments with blowing up capacitors in the backyard. <laughs> now you can see here this is. Um, <laughs> this is, I had a little board that had a couple of connectors on it, 
and I had the ability to wind up the voltage to 50 volts at up to 10 amps and these capacitors of course would be at much much lower voltages and these capacitors when I, I put this voltage and current on it would absolutely explode and I was experimenting with how to capture the, uh, the, the, the particular capacitor exploding. Now you can see on here this particular capacitor is shooting sparks out the side of it <laughs> before it explodes. So this is this was a, a great a great capture. Um, and then then a little bit later it absolutely explodes um, into a cloud of of um, probably carcinogenic uh, carcinogenic uh, dust that comes out of the capacitors. No, I, I'm joking there. I'm joking there. This is another one, and this was all done in the backyard. So, um, but this is the was a capacitor sitting on those two terminals there, and it literally just exploded its can and all of the fluff and everything that goes out of a uh, out of a capacitor. Um, the next door neighbours used to come out every so often and wonder what the big bangs were. Um, here, here's another interesting. <laughs> you you can see. Um, the light versus me, I'm, the, the match is still on there. That's when it's captured the strike, the sound of the strike on the matchbox, but the light from it actually lighting up then was enough to put an image on the film. So I'm still on the matchbox strike surface, but it's lit. So that was, that was a bit of a tricky, uh, tricky one there, using sound triggers. Oh, there's me again. Um, I think that was hot. Uh, hot. Um, I, I, I boiled the water and then put the lid on, or something, something like that. Anyway, or boiled uh, it under it. That's a bigger one of that. Uh, oh, that's the balloon with me with a pin. Uh, I'm holding a pin there. Oh, now, okay. Now, <laughs> I happen to find. <laughs> This is a bit of uh, indulgence. Just indulge me here. When I was looking through uh, all my box of, of photos and bits and pieces, I found this particular photo. Now, I suspect not very many people will recognise who that is. That is Sir Mark Oliphant. Now, Sir Mark Oliphant was a very famous South Australian... Uh, South Australian... Um, uh, um, actually, I... Th I think he was, uh, I think he was governor at the time, actually, something like that. But Sir Mark was a physicist um, and was instrumental and actually was part of the team that put together the atomic bomb, uh, which he later regretted in in later life. But Sir Mark Oliphant was probably one of one of the very famous um, up there with Bragg and uh, Bragg and Bragg, the father and son. Um, um, uh, x-rays and all sorts of things so Sir Mark and, and yes that is me shaking his hand that is the high school's science prize uh, in South Australia back in I think 1980 or 1981 and I built a um, I actually built a uh, linear induction motor an AC driven linear induction motor um, uh, which demonstrated uh, uh, AC motors for a start, but also uh, linear uh, linear induction motors, which was a bit um, which was a bit a bit novel, um, and uh, had a, a little working model that I submitted to the science prize and actually won. Um, so I got to uh, that was the presentation night where uh, Sir Mark Oliphant um, shook your hand. So uh, I can very proudly say I've actually shaken Sir Mark Oliphant's hand. Uh, so that was a bit of a highlight in uh, my science career. And, um, oh, okay, good evening to Richard, uh, VK7ZBX, on the Spirit 2, heading to Geelong. Yes, the Spirit now comes into Geelong. So uh, excellent, into a brand spanking new uh, terminal. So uh, so there you go. Dodgy coverage from Telstra Wholesale. <laughs> okay, um, excellent. Now, we'll get, uh, we'll get Hayden in. Um, We'll get Hayden in because we'll do a 
do a, uh, a promo. I figured you probably want me in here. Oh, yes, please. Oh. Now, what? Uh, hello, Hayden. Good, uh, good evening. Good afternoon, morning. Good afternoon, <laughs> evening, and good night. <laughs> and it's good night for me and it's good night for him. <laughs> I, I like your tail. Yeah. Oh, that's very nice. That's very yeah, nice. the league. Uh, these are actually extremely comfortable. They're one of those... Um, not, what are they called? They're not rugby jumpers. Um, whatever they're called. Wind shoes. Yeah, something like that. They're, they're uh, very nice. Okay. So they've got fleece on the inside? Uh, uh, yeah, a little bit. A yeah, little bit. Um, you, can buy, you can buy them from the ARRL store. They're not that much. I think they're only about 30 bucks. Nice. Right. Yeah. Very nice. Well, we, we, we're sporting. Um, we're in... Uh, oh, that's it. Sport. Um, sport? Uh, Sports top. This blood, yeah. Um, <laughs> It's an American term. It's an it's something yeah something like that. Someone someone in the chat will know. Now I wonder what's happening in two weeks' time. Don't. <laughs> Better weather. No rain. Oh. <laughs> well, here's hoping. Well, yes. Yeah, the long the forecast looks okay, but yeah, uh, the Tassie Ham Radio Conference and Expo. If you don't know what it is, where have you been for the last few months? You've been living under a rock. Yes. <laughs> so. On the 5th, actually no, let's start on the 4th. Yes. The 4th, the evening of the 4th, which is the Friday, mm -hmm. we are actually having a barbecue um, up here uh, at the club rooms. Now we're about to send out a email to everybody with a link. So everybody who has uh, registered, we will send you a link uh, to another Eventbrite. Yes, yes, I know it's another Eventbrite thing, but it won't. I think that's the other thing we've we've learnt a little <laughs> bit over this Correct. process. Um, so yeah, bear with us. But yes, Eventbrite, we know. Okay. Yep. Um, but for you to be able to register for coming up to the barbecue, so there's a barbecue up here, only a couple of bucks. Get you a snag and a couple of snags or whatever. Um, and the registration for the barbecue is free. Is free. It's, it's yes. just so that we know how many how numbers, many, yeah. Yeah, how many Cat people are coming. Catering purposes. Yeah. So just register for the barbecue if you're coming, and uh, and then we can we can we can get you in there. Mike. Mike's, <laughs> Mike's registered. Mike is coming along. Mike is coming along. Mike so is coming along. hello, Mike. Uh, VK7MJ from down at Margate. So good stuff. I hope to catch up at the 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 weekend. So good <clears> stuff. Now on the uh, Saturday, the fifth. We have a whole series of presentations which are available on the website and I've got the link in the, uh, the video description. But what we want to do is focus on the expo on the Sunday. So this is, where's this happening? The, uh, so the expo is going to be at the Studio Theatre which is, it's literally right next door to where we will be on Saturday. So we'll be in the Stanley Burberry Lecture Theatre on Saturday. Sunday is going to be in the uh, in the um, studio theatre and also part of the foyer as well. Yep. Um, so we, we're utilising those two spaces. Um, so yeah, we we're, we're going to be in there. And we have the IC. We will. We have the ICOM IC nine hundred five. In fact, I was talking to the engineer from ICOM today, and it has arrived, and he is setting it up and. He's really looking forward to bringing it down. He was, a, he was actually, he was, I think he was a bit chuffed today. I'm not he sure was. I I'll be quite serious. He was, uh, he was really chuffed and was like just tinkering with it today and, and having a play. So, yeah. So he's being able to play with it. Is he an amateur? Just matter. Yeah. He is. Yep. Yeah. What's his call sign? VK three EHG. EHG. Echo mm. Hotel Golf. Okay. Hero. Okay. Hero. Cool. Um, Hero Sun. Hero Sun. Hero Sun. Um, okay. And um, and we've got a couple. Of, actually, I had an idea, which uh, we've got here at the club, the um, amateur television transmitters. Um, it, this is going to be a working model. It's not just a demo that's just sitting there. That's just to look at. Mm -hmm. It's actually going to be running. Um, so yeah, we might be able to do a little bit of um, reception on the 905. Not sure about transmission. We'll see how we go with that. But we might be able to send some pictures to it and look at it on the screen, and that'll be good. I love it. So I love it. Got the 905. Okay. And other bits and pieces as well. Now we're going to have. Or do it's. Uh, oh, should we keep that secret? I don't know. If we should keep that secret. Yeah. All right. Okay. Should we? Should we keep because we well, keep them in suspense. All about DX is going to be there. Hint. Hint. Yeah. So all about DX. Um, in a big way. Yeah. All about DX. Uh, Kevin from from VK4 is going to be there. Um, 
he's got something special lined up. So yeah, you don't want to miss it. You definitely won't. Yeah, miss we'll it. keep. We'll, <laughs> let, let's keep. Let's keep that okay. one under wraps. Yeah. All right. Reckon. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, we've got Alara coming along. So yep. Linda, uh, Linda's going to be there. So fantastic. Mm-hmm. DX Systems. Yep. Lee VK3 GK. <laughs> Sorry. See, someone's so excited. Someone, they're, they're ringing up. They're, they're ringing up because they want to know what all about DX is bringing. I mean, it's, that's right. Yeah, um, that's unbelievable it. that they've already <laughs> found Justin's number and they're pestering him already. <laughs> See, there you go. That's, uh, that's what it is. Icom, uh, so as well as the 905 Icom, we're also going to be bringing a couple of other popular radios Definitely. with them. Uh, we've got JCAR. So JCAR's coming along. I think they're going to be bringing some 3D printing stuff, um, some... Uh, radios like UHF thing and other stuff, okay. uh, a couple of electronic bits and pieces. So cool. So J Car's going to have a little cool. Cool. Now the big news we've got: Northern Tasmanian Amateur Radio Club let us know today mm-hmm. that they are uh, they are coming down. Well, no, they didn't let us know that today. They no. are supplying uh, three shack cable kits. So they they've they've um, they've managed to raise some funds to build some cables for, for everyone's shack um, some patch leads so uh, they're providing them as a raffle prize so thanks to NTARC um, and the committee up there in the club for doing that so that's huge that's excellent they're going to have idea. a table um, set up with their um, endurance ride stuff and some other bits and pieces so. and if you haven't seen the endurance ride stuff the RFID uh, tags are absolutely phenomenal mm. um, that they use uh, so yeah um, oh okay good evening from VK2 YSB still so uh, from Grafton New South Wales I hope you're uh, keeping afloat um, we're barely keeping afloat oh, correct <laughs> it is so wet and uh, yeah anyway yeah. okay moving on <laughs> uh, Reese so we'll have a table oh, of correct oh, correct um, um, uh, Rotarians of Amateur Radio Raw yep uh, Raw um, Spook Tech Spook Tech so Heath VK3 TWO Spook Tech is coming down he's going to have a stack load of stuff there um, his, his dear little utes apparently absolutely Chocker. Well, I don't know if you saw the email, but he actually sent me. An e- he's actually sent us an email asking if he can store it somewhere. He's got oh, that much okay, stuff, and okay. yeah. we can do that. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. Uh, Sota. Yep. Um, so that uh, so uh, Tony Seven Ltd is going to be doing um, cool. a Sota um, thing for us. Um, not sure about the next one. Okay, uh, that's uh, TB confirmed. Yep. Uh, WIA. Correct. WIA going to be there. Um, so they're going to have very active presence. And Paul. PAS, VK5 yes. PAS. Um, uh, is, and Maz. And and Maz. Maz. And, sorry, and Maz. Yep. Now, what's Maz's new call sign? MAZ. VK5 MAZ. MAZ. Yep. Yes, uh, with World Ride Floor and Fauna. Paul said to me that when he was at the A-Rig um, car boot sale that he set up a WWFF um, stand and it was just, he couldn't get away. Like, he, he struggled to actually get away and have a look at the... The other bits and pieces there, so there's a lot okay. to okay. there's a lot to, to take in there. So um, cool. yeah, we're gonna gonna have those. So that's gonna be good. Now our raff- and we're all, oh and oh, you've missed out one sorry, on there. The Hobart sorry. Hacker Space. They're also coming the along. Hobart Hacker Space. Yes, which is yep. uh, on the promo. <laughs> it is on the promo. Yep. Uh, li- <laughs> little Devil Antennas as well. Uh, Ken. We've got Little Devil Antennas. DY Seven DY is yep. going to be there, well and truly. And we've got I think it's four to five at this stage of pre loved. Uh, equipment tables so mm-hmm. we've got all up what was it about 27 or 28 tables? 28 tables i think yeah so, so that people have requested so there's 28 tables of stuff yep to see yep and when we say a lot of stuff to see it's a big wide variety of stuff it's not just sort of like we talked a little bit about the 905 a lot with the microwave stuff but there's going to be a bit there for everyone i think and Correct. and there's a there's I was actually thinking today, the collective knowledge that is going to be in the room. Scary. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely scary. Yeah, very much so. Absolutely scary. Um, and now, yeah. raffle. raffle. The raffle prize pool, as we've just told you, is has uh, extended something uh, great. Well, it's grown even more, actually. Oh. There's another one that's not on there, which... Oh. Okay. If we go through, we'll them, update I'll, it. I'll tell you. Yeah. No, no, well, okay. We, um, the 705, uh, IC705 and the backpack, Yep. Um, the Rig Expert uh, AA650 Zoom Antenna Analyzer from RF Solutions. Yep, so thanks to Carsten for that. Well and truly. $250 uh, dollar 
uh, voucher from TUT Mtron uh, in Western Australia. Yep, Mark. Yep. They, they couldn't make it, but uh, they they put forward $250 voucher, so fantastic. Oh, you can do you can do this one. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> a Nano VNA H. So uh, there's a Nano VNA from myself. Cool. Uh, and I'll put the extra one in. So this is one that was today. Okay. Uh, 25, there's going to be a, a coax, coax cable pack which is from Messi and Poloni, so that's going <sighs> to nice. include a 25-metre roll of Hyperflex 10 okay. cable. Okay. Uh, it's going to include uh, a couple of connectors, PL259 connectors, okay. a couple of end connectors, and the special scissors that you need as well. Okay. Maybe also some silicon seal as well. So that's yep. also from myself and from Messi and Poloni. So that arrived all the way from Italy today. Now, can I just say, if you haven't watched... Hayden's uh, Ham Radio DX on everything I everything I knew about <laughs> coax cables is wrong. Yeah, please go and watch it. Yep, it's Same. a great video. Yeah, Messi and Poloni um, is um, the, the I got I got some more stuff from Messi and Poloni in there. Uh, oh, you do, you're going to do the the um, the the, the silicon the sealant. Thing. Yep, yep. So I'm going to I'm going to do that. They've actually got some cable though, which is they call Sahara FT8. The reason they call it Sahara FT8, huh? it's white, so it's uh, so it reflects. It's, it, well, no, it's a white. It's, so it's a white jacket to um, to stop solar retention. Mm. So when yep. the sun's shining, okay. it doesn't get hot for yep. starters. The second thing is is also that um, it's got Sahara because it's uh, a little bit better in high temperatures, um, but also it's for use for with amplifiers. So you know how if you're transmitting quite a lot of power, especially on a digital mode like FT8, although not a lot of people like to transmit a lot of power on FT8, um, if you hold the back of your coax out the back of your uh, uh, amplifier, it gets hot, and that changes the uh, characteristics. the characteristics of the of the cable. The cable will have more loss. It'll yep. um, it'll change the it actually dielectric characteristics gets hotter. and stuff. It, it's a little chain reaction. Yep. So they've designed a cable which is for high uh, temperature. Okay. And they've also got little heat suppressors that go on the back of their connectors. Yeah. Ah, the bots have found the... Mm, the bots always yes, find me. Yes. The okay. bots are always find me. Nova Lord. Um, I know who you are, Nova Lord. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> there are no 905s being given away. In fact, you need to you need to register. You haven't registered yet. So, yeah, uh, right, so, right, so there you go. Right. Uh, but, there, but you could win a 705, so there you go. Yeah, hey. Exactly. Um, uh, but yeah, they've got little heat suppressors that go on the back of the actual connectors, which are quite interesting. So okay, okay. Um, uh, they're there for um, dissipating the heat. Yeah, okay, okay. So yeah, cool little cable. Um, but yeah, that's coming up soon. But anyway. Very nice. Okay. Um, now, um, VK7 J, oh, VK7 JST, yeah, VK5 fine. JST. So this is Jim Tregellis' 250-watt LCD power SWI kit from yours truly, and also a Diamond Super Gainer 70, uh, SG7200, the 2 and 70 antenna, the, the one that's a metre long. Mm. Um, David Minchin, uh, VK5KK, is giving away a full 122 gigahertz transceiver. That's going to be so interesting to give away because I 100% it's going to go to someone that's going to be like, I have no idea what I'm going to use this for. And we're going to see them out in the back of the car park swapping it with like, oh yeah, I'll swap a 122 gigahertz transceiver for a patch lead or something like that. You know, it's it's going to happen. It's going to happen. We, we need to get more, more transceivers in the state. Yeah. Um, well, that's the problem. There's only one, isn't there? But anyway. Um, some Yosu merch from yours truly. Some beautiful handmade pens, which I should have next week, uh, from <laughs> Rick, VK7RI. Uh, anyone who's on Rick's uh, Facebook page will have seen he regularly posts some beautiful pens that uh, he uh, he makes, and these are special conference pens. Mm. So these are one-offs. So the next yeah. one, I just realised I need to add that to the official prize list because I forgot about it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Foundation license manual for the WIA, and also an Australian ham radio handbook from Peter Parker, uh, VK3YE. The Antark cables, which Hayden let us know about. Um, now, is there anything else? Uh, <laughs> probably. I mean, there we've, probably will we've be. Got, we've got, just to put it into some sort of context, we've got over over four and a half thousand dollars worth of prizes, which is uh, raffle prizes, which is pretty insane. Like, I, yeah, it's we 
we're giving away a lot. <laughs> uh, we are, yes, 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 yes. And that all gets drawn on Sunday and, at 1pm. Yep, and thank you to all the sponsors and everyone who's provided a prize. It's, here, here. it's been very much appreciated and, uh, and yeah, um, everyone, every, everyone gets a chance to win. Everyone gets a chance to win. Which is, I think, next on your... Yes. Everyone your, gets a chance to win. Yeah, Oprah Winfrey style. <laughs> yep. Now, uh, everyone who books either conference or expo or both gets a raffle ticket. Yep. One. One raffle ticket. Yep. And there will be extras available on the, uh, on the expo day. Um, so, yes, that's... Um, you, you need to be there. Yep. Uh, the extra raffle tickets will be five dollars a ticket. Correct. Yep. And that's a require. That's a raffle licensing requirement. Yes. Uh, there's, there's actually quite a few requirements. Uh, a few of them that we don't agree with them that we don't like, but we have to abide uh, by them correct. because of the Tasmanian law. Correct. Um, like we need to. Yeah. So we can't yeah. give you a discount for bulk tickets. No. You can buy 20 of them, but they're all no. going to be $5 each. <laughs> and also the way that we actually draw the prizes is a little uh, bit frustrating. But correct. Anyway. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But we have to comply with those rules and regulations. But the good thing is that the major prize, which is the 705, everyone has an absolute equal chance correct. of winning because there is because obviously when someone wins a prize, we take the ticket out. Correct. But they'll have a they'll have an equal, equal um, opportunity to, to win. So. Well and truly. Yep. Well and truly. So, um, if you haven't registered, you've only got five days to go. Four days to go. No, five days. It's five, 31st. Five, five days, yeah. So, you've got five days to go. Um, if you are t- coming to the expo, um, we, we, we still encourage that you um, uh, book in advance. But yeah. if you are coming to the expo on Sunday, then we, we are accepting walk-ups. Yep. Um, but but not for the Saturday. No. So if you turn up on Saturday expecting to turn, come into the conference, sorry, you didn't register. Yeah. And so yeah. But, but the expo you will be able to, expo and we've got um, card facilities so you can um, uh, pay with card, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yep. Uh, doors will open on Saturday at eight thirty. Yep. In the morning. Yep. For a nine a.m. start. Yes. Sharp. And on Sunday, doors will open at nine. Yes. So, yes. So we're starting at nine, but the doors will open. Yeah, uh, uh, a little bit earlier. Yeah. Um, we might even possibly on Saturday open a little bit earlier than that because we got to give out lanyards and correct. stuff. Correct. And correct. We don't. We might run out of time. So. Yeah. <laughs> but we will be starting at nine. Um, yes, we will be starting at nine on Saturday. Yeah. Right on the dot. Because um, because well, we we've got to hook up with America. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, and we also have to finish at five. Uh, yep. So so yeah. Now um, the other thing, which is a bit of an FAQ, people are asking about food. Food. We're not actually providing food, uh, but there are lots of options for food. Yeah. Um, so the main the main food that we're talking about here is probably the lunch uh, on the Saturday and the Sunday. Uh, there are some options, which is straight across the road at Hill Street. Mm-hmm. What's the, what's it called? Uh, well, the, there's two. There's Me My, Me My Cafe. Me My. I don't yeah. know if it's Me My or My, my Me or whatever my it me. is. I think it's My Me. But there's a cafe. Yeah, there's a cafe there. Um, and then there's Hill Street as well, uh, where you can get odds and ends and there's sandwiches. salads and, and all sorts of yep, stuff. Yep, and there. all that sort of stuff. Mm. Uh, Sandy Bay is only five minutes away, so if you've got a car, and of course parking's free, so yes, yes, yes. Um, you don't have to worry about losing your spot. Um, if you go to, although I think exams will still be running then, but don't worry about that. Um, okay. uh, so yeah, Sandy Bay, five minutes away, um, DoorDash, Uber Eats, it's all available there. So yep. yeah, you can. There's there's a wide variety of things that you can get. And the thing about the Saturday night, uh, a lot of people probably will be whizzing off to Salamanca and the like, and... We will eventually. We've got a bit of work to do on Saturday night, uh, correct. But, we, but we will hopefully be there. We'll get there about 10 o'clock, I reckon. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. No, um, quite, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, um, uh, it, but we encourage you, if you are thinking about that, probably to book mm. uh, if you've got a reasonable size group. Um, yeah, find a decent restaurant. Um, there's... A whole bunch of them on the uh, yeah down at Salamanca, 
um, like Brick Factory and Grape and there's the Indian restaurant down there, there's well, the Menza, sure. there's, there's Sushi, there's, sushi, there's the Whaler, there's, there's Preachers, pub, there's a whole bunch. Irish Murphys. Yeah, so yeah. There's, there's lots of options, but for a larger group. Not that we know about this stuff at all. It's because we go at lunchtime. <laughs> um, but, but a larger group, obviously, we need to, um, yeah, you need to book in advance because, Correct. yeah. Yep. Okay. An overlord sorted it. Ouch, sorted now. What's the ouch for? It didn't cost that much. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So, uh, thank you, Hayden. All right. That's fantastic. Um, so that's that's our show for tonight. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, ooh, hang on. Sh- uh, sh- Sean, uh, Yum, Hill Street Grocer, uh, and Richard stuff. Mm, okay. I think you're probably yeah. more likely uh, at, at Mimai for, for hot food because uh, Hill Street have... Um, they have lunches, but you kind of need to warm them up, and we don't have a microwave. Yeah. So don't go okay. buying like a lasagna from Hill Street and expect to warm it up. Yeah. We, don't okay. have, we will have uh, tea, coffee, biscuits, biscuits. Um, uh, herbal tea. Yes. Yeah, we'll have all of that um, available for free. Yes, that's part of your ticket. Yep. So we'll so we'll have those for refreshments at uh, I was going to say half time at, um, uh, at at the leg stretching time, quarter time, and three quarter time. Yep, quarter time, three quarter time. Um, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll we'll have that available. So cool. Okay, that's fantastic. All right, that is our show for tonight, uh, which is good. That's twenty twenty seven. So uh, thank you, Hayden. No worries. And um, we'll do a huge big promo next week uh, as the last one. Uh, now I we have the volunteers meeting next week as well. So if you are a volunteer, don't. make sure you rock up. Yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. Because uh, we need to let you know what your role and responsibility is. Yeah. What time are we going to actually do that? Are we doing that early before the ATV we'll do, night, or we'll do it early? Um, yep. In fact, we might not even have a ATV night. How would that be? It might be a volunteers night. Yeah, there's a bit to get through. Correct. Are we talking instant coffee or barista? Ah, we're talking. No, we're talking in between, Murray. We're actually talking very nice Macona coffee, uh, so it's not um, <laughs> no Audi bargains. No, sorry, Richard, sorry, no middle row, oh. cheap chainsaw we should bargains. Have, we should have told Richard while he was over in Geelong to uh, oh. get us a couple of those bike stands from Audi. Yes, he could have gotten. A... No, well, he's on his way, or is he on his way back? No, he's on his way back. Oh. No, no Audi <laughs> bargains. Oh. Uh, I won't be serving up the espresso line, line all. I've got no idea how to make coffee. <laughs> I don't drink the stuff. Oh, no. so. Well, um, yeah, Tony, Tony, Tony might, but I'm not sure. Lionel's anyway. one of our uh, one of our very dedicated online uh, okay. um, viewers who's got, he's purchased an online ticket. Lionel's in Fantastic. the United States. Okay. And it's ridiculous time at the moment, but anyway, he's uh, he's awake. Okay. And he'll be watching the the conference on the Saturday, so. Maybe he's having his Friday. espresso. That's why Friday. he's awake. Yeah. Yes. Oh, very good. Thank you, Lionel, for. But yeah, we need uh, we need Richard to get us a couple of those bike stands next time yes. he's over there. Yes. Yes. I'm sure he'll be back. I'm sure he will need to go back to the Geelong terminal. So, uh, oh, good stuff. All right. Um, thank you, Hayden. Um, and that's our show for tonight. Uh, we'll see you. Won't see you next week because we won't, we won't have a show. And uh, upstate New York, and yep, I'll be virtually there. Well, there you go. I love it. All right, 73, and we'll catch you uh, next time. This is VK7 OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania with our DATV Experimenters Night. And 73. And fade to test pattern.